Hey, hello and welcome back and that is right today we're returning to the subject of Terra Master and today's NAS is the Terra Master F8 SSD Plus. This is a dedicated M.2 NVMe SSD NAS and we're going to be testing a variety of multimedia files on this system. We're going to be looking at native playback, we're going to be looking at transcoding and conversions and we're going to occasionally talk about the subject of bandwidth. Now one of the things we have to get out of the way very early doors is I'm integrate, um, I'm interacting with this system over 10 gigabit Ethernet. So, for example, if we go into the network settings here, you're able to see via this interface that the one interface this system has is running at 10,000 megabits. That's 10 gigabit Ethernet. And my local PC that I'm using to access this system, as you can see here, we go in. It is a 10 gigabit connection, and I am running both of these systems uh, on the same network there and indeed I've opened up jumbo frames for those that understand what I'm talking about to 9000 on both of these systems here it is on the local PC advanced here there's our jumbo packets at 9000 and when we go into the TerraMaster now as you're able to see MTU or jumbo frames at 9000 now what does that mean that means that both of these I have opened up a thousand megabytes per second performance or a gigabyte and I've opened things up to the best data packet exchange almost a synthetic level so there shouldn't really be any network problems now why do I bring that up well because one of the things I've learned even with my initial testing of this system and this is to take an advantage of transcoding at made by CPU hurt and taking advantage of the full integrated graphics of the n305 processor inside this system is that it still manages to do a i would say not great job of managing the bandwidth for example if we go into my files here now this file i'm about to play by the way do not be fooled into thinking this is some domestic class file this is huge this is a 1.4 gigabyte 30 second file now if i click play here we bring it up there at the bottom We've got the original file trying to be played, and you can see here in the web browser, it's not playing. There, on the bottom right, you can see that we are hitting one gigabit per second. We're not hitting 10 gigabit, but we're still hitting a gigabit. And again, we can talk about the conversions there of megabits, megabytes, gigabits, gigabytes, etc. later on. But ultimately, as you can see, the CPU isn't even taking a run up at it when it's trying to play the original quality and the bottom left you can see that dark orange there which is the buffering not exceeding seven or eight seconds generally considered to be the fail point now why do i bring that up well so if we go into a client app like this one this is the windows client application rather than the browser which has a tendency to truncate even though plex right now is only using 131 megabytes if we go in and play that same file so again, we go into our 4K test files. We go ahead, bring it all the way down to the bottom and go for our heftiest, densest, bigger, better file. Play that one there, open it up in original, and it plays like an absolute charm. Now, the big takeaway I want you to have right now, this early point in the video, is number one, this NAS can play absolutely everything I'm going to throw at it in terms of taking advantage of dedicated clients. As you can see, it's played the file, the buffering's fine. And if we look at the performance numbers here on the right, you can see bandwidth consumption there, not too bad. But again, if we were running this on a standard gigabit network, you'd never be able to play this. If you tried to play this on standard one gigabit ethernet routers and one gigabit ethernet networks, which the majority of you are probably gonna do, that's where you're gonna see throttling. So sometimes when you're playing dense files, just keep in mind that sometimes it's your network that's throttling it, but it's more to it than that. We played that incredibly dense file. Remember, 400 megabits per second when the majority of domestic 4K media, if you are lucky, will exceed maybe 10 to 20 megabits per second domestic Blu-ray rips. On top of that, this is HEVC, highly efficient video codec, 10-bit HDR, Ultra HD. This is the biggest file I've got, and the CPU barely broke a sweat. Now, as long as you're using a client app, you should be absolutely fine. So again, these are apps that you would use on your smart TV, your home console, your whatever, and indeed, HEVC support has increased considerably. But what about if you needed to change this file? Now, some of you might say, I don't need to change it. I've already got support of HEVC on my local TV or device. Fine. 
But what if you're accessing this device remotely? You're using TerraMaster's remote access relay services. You know, you're going via their own remote access protocol, or perhaps you're using something like TailScale. Regardless, say you're accessing this enormous file remotely. Say you've got an actual movie in this length that's a two or 300 gigabyte file, but you want to access it on the train remotely. So this time, we're going to play this file, but we're now going to downgrade it. We're going to bring it down to 480p, because maybe you're watching it on a mobile phone, or sat on the beach, or maybe on a cruise. Now in this scenario, as you can see, the CPU has woken up. We're seeing that CPU go from less than a percent, to now creeping up into the 20% mark, and going higher. Bandwidth consumption spiked, but it has now kind of laid dormant. And there at the top, as you can see, that HW there means we're using hardware transcoding. That means we're using the part of that CPU that gets the job done when it comes to graphical manipulation and ultimately more graphical processes there. Now, we're going to scale things back in terms of files just a wee bit. But if we go back to the web browser, and again, we play this same incredibly huge file that's not really representative of normal files, and scale it down to an automatic conversion, where it will bring this file down, the system is still going to hit difficulties there. And sometimes the client app, as you can see, we are now hitting an astonishing 93% utilization, and there at the bottom left, barely covering it. You can see, even though it was going for that hardware transcoding, ultimately, it just wasn't able to do the job. So sometimes when you are testing these uh, devices, or at least playing back your multimedia, always keep in mind that you are going to have to be a little bit reliant on the client device you choose to play out of. But let's return to some of the more traditional testing. If we go for this file here, we're not going to do an E1080p, I don't think, because we know this system can handle it. Let's go for Roast Duck. This is an HEVC file of a significantly lower bit rate than the one we've just looked at, but it is HEVC and we're now playing it in the web browser just to see how the system handles it. As you can see, we're using hardware transcoding there. As you can see down towards the bottom there, we're seeing CPU utilization spike significantly, bandwidth utilization very low, meaning not much data is actually being exchanged, and there was still a delay in playing this back. That N305 i3 processor should be doing stuff like this a great deal easier. Now again, to give it the benefit of the doubt, if we play this exact file here using the client tool, which let's be realistic, most of you are going to do, and we play this same file natively with no transcoding, boom, it plays back immediately. Very few of you are going to be using the web browser to access your Plex Media server. You're going to be using mobile phones. You're going to be using other devices. But just keep in mind that once you start integrating and utilizing remote access protocol, chances are you're going to start needing the system to start playing with those files a little bit. And that's where that efficiency is going to play its part. So let's play that file again, and this time transcode it down to a shocking 160p file there. That is horrendous. It's going to be like four pixels sneezed on the screen, as you can see there. On the right-hand side, CPU is going up, but the key point is playback is happening. RAM utilization is low, CPU utilization is still reasonable, and I would say this is still a success for quite a large file, and a rather efficient CPU for that matter. And remember, all the time, as you can see, CPU usage is being um, increasing, is increasing throughout these tests, and the system is notifying us of that. Now, while it's doing all this, the other thing we should probably think about is temperatures. Right now, the NVMEs are hitting, you know, high temperatures in the 50s or 60s. These aren't big numbers for M.2 NVMEs. That won't really throttle until you hit around 70 to 80 degrees, but still, we are seeing those temperatures rise. Now, if we come out of that, minimize there, go back into Plex, we'll look at another dense file. We go into the 4K section, and this time we're going to take advantage of a, a rather dense file. Let's go for there at the top, we'll go for Caves of Wonder. Now, Caves of Wonder is an H.264 file, so no conversions are needed, no licensing problems. And as you can see, the file's playing immediately. It's playing like an absolute charm, no problems whatsoever. Bandwidth utilization playing natively, absolutely fine. 
Again, we'll bring it down to a rather awkward 328p. Bring that forward. It's still playing there. Bandwidth utilization spike. Again, because we're playing it back. CPU utilization there. Starting at 20%. Let's see, is it going to go any higher? Seems to be fine for the moment. It's sitting around 20%. Things are seemingly fine there. And for those of you that are wondering about the recording machine that's doing all the work today, this is not really t testing this machine too much. And we've got an onboard GPU as well. And we're using OBS to do these recordings here via a virtual machine, hence the Activate Windows part. But absolutely fine playback there. We're using the app. And indeed, we're seeing some throttling there when utilizing some of the web browser stuff. So again, keep that in mind. Now, if we go for the 8K media, this is where we hit the Johnny Big Banana stuff. Needless to say, if we try to play this file in the web browser, we're probably going to hit some difficulties. There's that conversion there. Again, I'm well aware most of you are not going to be accessing Plex via the web browser, but you are going to be utilizing it, uh, uh, accessing Plex, potentially on scaled down devices, where a lot of these problems are going to be encountered, where a lot of Plex clients are effectively just browser tabs repackaged as a exe or an apk but nothing really going on there but of course we make our way over to the client application which is always going to have our back go into the library there and play the file this is an 8k file being streamed from the nas and playback fine we are streaming 8k plex off of this NAS and crucially if you access in this system via multiple users at once I'll tell you right now you're not gonna have problems if this system can output 8k in original format on Plex with the CPU barely breaking a sweat and bandwidth consumption remember being 10 gigabit and we're only hitting that one gig on this one file as long as you utilize a 2.5 g or 10 gig network you're going to be able to stream multiple big dense files like this one and once you introduce transcoding so if we bring that down to 480p imagine we're watching this perhaps on a mobile phone then we see the system start to react we're seeing that cpu start to go up we are moving an 8K file into 480p. That's like a file that's recorded in 2024 being played in 2004, but it's still able to do the job. We're seeing slight blur, of course, but it's playing the file with a slight delay there. I don't see many of you transcoding 8K down to 480p, but it's still nice to know you've got that option. But just keep in mind that we are using hardware transcoding thanks to that CPU having integrated graphics. And of course, to achieve a lot of the results we hit today, we needed a Plex Pass account. Otherwise, you can't take advantage of hardware transcoding. We'll test two more 8K files of our bigger varieties. So if we move down into our library and we go for something a little deeper nightscape hk uhd using vp 90 60 frames per second hdr 24 and if we open that up as you can see original quality of 8k playing like an absolute dream there and as we leave flex running there we can make our way into the web browser and perhaps play something a little dense here so why don't we go ahead and play cave of wonder that's an h.264 file played from the beginning and we're playing both of these files simultaneously here on the web browser and on the client. But why stop there? Why don't we go ahead and duplicate this and have another instance of another big old dense file being played here while we're playing 8K and 4K here. So now we're going to go into 4K test files and this time we're going to play Beauty of Taiwan. I'm going to play that there in the web browser, Beauty of Taiwan. We're having some slowdown here on my local machine. But you know what? That's mainly down to my local machine right now starting to really throttle. We're seeing that transcode. We're seeing direct playback. We're seeing it all take place in the background, as you can see. But it's on my local machine that we're not seeing it catch up. But that's kind of hit the maximum of what we can do with our CPU while we're transcoding this big file and playing back a dense 4K file, and while playing back an 8K file here in the background. It is playing, it's just a still shot, but nonetheless, I would overall say 
this is kind of the height of what we can do but for an NAS like this, I'm still really pleased with what we've been able to get this NAS to carve out for us during our playback and plex testing. It's a bit overkill to use an M2 NVMe NAS system for this kind of job. It's probably okay to use something like the Terramaster F4 424 Pro. You'll save yourself uh, approximately $300, maybe even $400, depending on where you are in the world. And if you do that, you couldn't take advantage of a combination of hard drives and SSDs, but that doesn't rob or detract from the fact that this system at peak is still able to do some phenomenal playback here in the background. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There should be a link in the description to the full review of the F8 SSD Plus. I recommend you check that out. And of course, there are links in the description to get hold of this NAS for yourself. And if you use those links and you were going to go to those shops anyway and you found this video helpful, make sure all of those things are true. Please use those links as it will result in a small commission coming back to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares. It's just us and it allows us to keep doing what we do. Have yourselves a fantastic week.